In this video, we're going to look at some of the prerequisite skills on Delta Math for uh, completing the square, factoring by completing the square. Now, let's talk, there's, there's really a couple of different ways that we can factor. Uh, you can factor by grouping, and, and that is nice if it's already set up for you, like if the problem is already set up with, you know, four terms instead of three, or um, there, are, there are ways that that works nicely for us, but it, it can sometimes be a little bit uh, contrived. It doesn't always work quite the way we want it to. You can do your regular factoring where you look at multiplying together to be C or adding up to be B. And that works great if your A value is 1 or if your numbers, your roots are like whole numbers. But it doesn't work well if you've got like imaginary solutions, uh, if you've got something like... Um, it doesn't work well if you've got like decimal solutions, right? It just works for like nice whole numbers. Um, but we're going to take a look at completing the square. Now completing the square is probably the most complicated of the three ways. However, it works for everything. It's going to solve for your imaginary roots. It's going to solve for your decimals, your fractions. Like it doesn't matter what it is. And no matter how complicated the problem gets, completing the square is roughly the same difficulty. So it kind of raises the floor of how hard even the easiest problem is, but it really brings down the ceiling of how hard the hardest problem is. And this is really kind of, I'll say, the most mathematical way of, of finding roots and solutions. But because it's a little bit more challenging, we're going to walk through some of the basic skills here on Delta Math. So um, it might not make a ton of sense as you're working through the practice skills, but just think of it like we're just doing one piece and working on that, and working on this piece and working on that, and, and working on that piece and working on that. And then at the end, what we're going to do is we're going to combine them all together, uh, and that will be in part two. Uh, we'll combine it all together to complete the square. So let's start with this first skill called uh, finding the square constant. So. Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to hit start here. And what they're going to ask you to do is to find the value that would complete the square. Now, remember when we did some factoring, we said that things had to add up to be B, but multiply together to be C. If I'm thinking about my, my AX squared plus BX plus C, right? And then when my A value is 1, okay? So we're going to ignore the A value here again, too. So... When we're dealing with those, we'll just hit, uh, hit stop on the timer because that way it's not stressing anybody out. Um, so when we're dealing with this, we've got, we want something to multiply together to be C and then add up to be B. But to complete the square, what we're going to do is we're going to assume that the C value is some perfect square. So 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, something like that. And so we, what we end up with, and let's just kind of talk this out, I get, you know, X plus I'll call it, um, I'll call it some p value, okay? x plus p times x plus p. And, and notice what happens here. If I FOIL this out, I get x squared plus 2p, x is equal to p squared, or I'm sorry, plus p squared, okay? So what we have in this case is we have this 2p value, and we want to get the p squared value. So what we're going to do is we're going to divide my B value by 2 and then square it to get this value over here. So in this particular scenario, I've got 18. So I take 18, I divide it by 2 because it would be 9x plus 9x if I was to kind of foil that out. So 9x plus 9x is what's happening here. Um, so I've got 9. And then I'm going to square that 9 value. So 9 squared would be 81. So in this particular problem, I divide by 2 and I square it, and that's going to get me 81. So that would be the solution here. So let's, let's take a look at another one of these. And we'll hit start and we'll take a look. All right, so 10 is my B value. So I'm going to divide it by 2. So that's 5, and then I square it. And I get 25, okay? Notice the negative 14. I divide by 2, I get negative 7. And then I square it. Negative 7 times negative 7 gets me positive 49. Okay? And then you're just going to work through this. 8 divided by 2 squared is 16. Nine, 18 divided by 2 is 9. Squared is 81. Okay? Uh, it really shouldn't take that long to, to kind of get the hang of this. Um, and I want you to understand the math behind it. 
about what's going on. So here's really the benefit here. And again, I'll stop the timer here on this one. So we know that to complete the square, I get x uh, plus, well, I would get 36 here, right? And what happens here, the reason why this is valuable for us is that then I can factor this saying x plus 6 times x plus 6, okay? These two are equivalent. Now, in our regular equations, we're going to have some other values here, so you can't just like make up whatever number you want to work well, but there are ways for us to kind of manipulate the, the algebra. You know, this piece, the x squared and the 12x, that's gonna stay the same, but we can kind of adjust what's on which side of the equation so we get the number we're looking for. That's kind of big picture what we're doing here, and this is why it's valuable, is because it allows us to break this up into a perfect square. So, that's the first skill. Let's, uh, let's move on to our next skill. Um, so this one is just kind of to get us in the hang of it. Hang on one second. Let me back here. Okay, here's the next square. Complete the square. Um, they're asking you to complete the square to solve the quadratic equation. So what number would have to be added to both sides to complete the square? This is roughly the exact same thing. Again, what we're going to do is we're just going to really zero in on this piece right here. So if I was solving this to complete the square, the first thing I would do is I would clear out uh, the left side to just have x's, okay? So I'd add 25 to both sides, okay? So they're going to assume that you do that. Then they're asking, what would I have to add on both sides so I could complete the square? So we're doing the exact same thing we did before. We're gonna look at that 20 value. That's my 2p value. I'm gonna divide by two and I get 10, and I'm gonna square 10, and I would get one, all right? And so we're going to go ahead and put 100 as my answer. Okay. Now, what we would do with this if we were actually completing the square is I would add 100 to both sides. So I'd take this 100 right here and add 100 over here. Okay. And then I could take this x minus 20 plus 100 and I would get x minus 10 times x minus 10. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and submit that answer and just make sure that that is correct. Okay. And that is correct. And notice how they kind of show you what's going on here. And notice they take the next step um, that this is completing the square. And we can use that to solve for x. But I'll let you do that on your own if you can kind of figure it out. All right. Uh, the next one, it's going to do, um, let me do this, completing the square. the square and we want um, method one let me just uh, switch this to algebra two sorry about this guys all right so let's take a look at this one now this gets a little tricky when you get these a values out front in this video and it, just as far as we're doing for these videos we're not going to worry about a values we're just going to say Okay, we're going to let the a value equal 1, okay? We're not going to do anything else, okay? Now, notice what this one is. This one wants you to kind of set up the equation. So this is going to take you part way. It's not asking you to solve it. It's just asking you to set it up. Now, this is where things get a little more complicated. So first thing we're going to do, like we did before, we're going to get all the x's on one side. We're going to get all the numbers on the other side. So we get x squared here minus 16x is equal to 34, okay? And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to do that whole divide by two and square thing. So negative 16 divided by two is negative eight. Squared is 64. So I'm going to add 64 to both sides. So I've got x squared minus 16x plus 64 is equal to 64 plus uh, 34. That is going to be 90. All right, and then the second piece I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and factor this down. So I've got, this is equal to x minus eight. Notice, notice it's not plus eight because I've got the negative middle term here. X minus eight squared is equal to 98. And that's as far as we're going for this, okay? So notice how we've taken a couple steps here. We get all the x's on one side, we find which value we're going to add to both sides, and then we kind of factor it down. So this one here, be x minus 8 and over here we would get 98 okay 
Let's check that answer. That looks good, okay? So notice they do the exact same thing. You get divide by two and square it, and you can kind of follow these steps along. Okay. All right, so that's part one. Then part two, again, um, this can be done. They're going to give you this set here, okay? And what you need to do is you need to go ahead and solve it. So they're kind of breaking it into two pieces. In the next video, we're going to take a look at just doing it all together. This is just a practice walking through the steps so that no part of it seems too overwhelming. We'll put all the pieces together in the next video, but let's just go ahead and take a look at this real quick. So what we're going to do to solve for x is I'm going to go ahead and take the square root of both sides. Okay, so this one works out really nicely. I get x plus 8 is equal to plus or minus 4. Remember, when we take the square root of a positive number, it could be two negatives multiplying together or two positives. Either one would satisfy this. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and subtract 8 from both sides. So x is equal to negative 8 minus 4, and x is equal to negative 8 plus 4. So here are my options. x could equal negative 12 a comma or x could equal negative four and again use the comma or this plus sign to get multiple uh, answer options okay so let's go ahead and submit that it's good let's look at one more here um, let's find one with a non-real solution this will be good all right so i'm going to take the square root both sides just like before. I get x plus 3 is equal to the square root of negative 16. So the square root of 16 would be 4, but it's negative. So remember, that's going to give us an imaginary number. And it, again, it's going to be plus or minus here. So x plus 3 is equal to plus or minus 4. And since I have the square root of negative 1, it's 4i. And then what we'll do is we'll subtract 3 from both sides. So we get x is equal to negative 3 plus or minus or i. Notice I can't combine the negative 3 and the 4 like I did in the last problem because those values, uh, the negative 3 and the positive 4, it's not positive 4, it's positive 4i. So that's dealing with different terms there. So you can't combine them. So my final answer here, and you could do it as two sets. I, I just prefer to use the plus or minus button here. Negative 3 plus or minus 4, and you can just type the i, and it'll recognize that as imaginary, and we will submit that answer. Okay? All right, so hopefully that's helpful. We're walking through completing the square. Hopefully some of this is review, but if not, this is the first time you're seeing it, I want to walk you through the initial steps, and then in the next video, we'll take a look at the, the full thing, all the steps the whole way. All right, so that wraps up our review of the introductory steps to completing the square here on Delta.